In today's episode, we're going to show you how to upgrade your QRL node. And in celebration of Mainnet 3.0, we've built a really cool custom node. And we're going to do the walkthrough and show you how we built it from start to finish. So make sure you stay tuned for this exciting episode. And let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the QRL show, the place where you come for the crypto and stay for the quantum. In today's episode, we have an exciting one for you. We're going to cover two main parts within this episode. First is we are going to upgrade your node, cover a few basic questions about upgrading your QRL node. And we'll also show you, you know, how to do that with the instructions. And the second main part of this video is in celebration of mainnet 3.0. Michael Strike is going to, he's built an awesome custom node case. And so after we go through the node upgrade, he's going to do a full walkthrough on this from start to finish to give you your own inspiration to spark maybe building your own node on your side. But with me to have this conversation is our director of outreach at the QRL, Michael Strike. It's good to have you with me. Hey, familiar face. Hey, everyone. Greetings, community. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, for before we go into the main part of you know, going through and taking a look at the case that you've built. Actually, why don't I just, I'll quickly show on screen for three or four seconds. This is the final product of the steampunk theme case that uh, Michael's built. Okay. Coming back to the episode, the first part of the episode where we're going to cover the upgrade of the node. Um, Michael, I want to ask a few basic questions on the upgrading of the node, just as kind of a refresher. And then from this, we can lead into the, you know, for how people, how to do that. So my first question to you is why should I upgrade my node? If I'm someone viewing this, what's the, you know, the importance of it? What's the, the reason behind it? So that's the first question on uh, upgrading of the node. Why should I do it? All right. So there's uh, essentially two types there's two main types of forks, right? You have soft forks and you have hard forks. A soft fork is just an interim update, which doesn't actually modify the ledger um, it, it is, as far as how it works functionally. And mm -hmm. if you don't upgrade, you don't end up with a new chain. Uh, however, if with a hard fork, a hard fork results in essentially a new chain. So everyone that has taken, in this case, the CCM 3.0, uh, upgrade for Q the QRL node, they will start going off on another chain. And those that do not um, upgrade will be under a different set of rules and they will continue on the old chain. So it's like, you know, the old Bitcoin cash. If you don't like, yeah. the, if you don't like, uh, if you don't like the rules, you get to pick, it's your node. You get to decide if you don't like the node, you know, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the tenants of crypto. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, generally, I think most people always want to keep their nodes updated based on what's in line with the project because the project's improving things. So I, I recommend if you're running a uh, QRL node, I highly recommend you update it. Yep. And it's, it's kind of hard to tie the analogy to say, you know, just how you would update, you know, a system, operating system, anything on your computer, but you know, you can kind of relate it to that. It's probably best practice, but as you said, some of the core tenants of blockchain, you have the the power to 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 choose there. But um, a question that I have, which is kind of like an obvious one to probably most of us, including us, but what would happen if if you if you don't do an upgrade? Um, is there anything else that would be bad other than what you kind of just mentioned? Is there anything else negative about not upgrading? Um, what's the the short answer to that one? Well, I think in most projects, when they do a hard fork, not everyone. It's almost certainly not in big, you know, medium to bigger projects. Not everyone makes the upgrade in time by the block. Yeah. You know, the reasons for not doing it could be political or, you know, idea. It's, it's usually ideological. Yeah. Uh, um, but if you don't upgrade, you'll just continue on the same blockchain Chain. as all yeah. the other nodes that did not upgrade. Yeah. You know, and if you decide to do, you know, like Bitcoin Cash, that was an ideological reason not to upgrade, and that BCH mm -hmm. is still around. So, yeah. um. Uh, in this case, definitely take the upgrade. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so with that, could you um, give us a real quick walkthrough on your screen and show us um, an upgrade of the QRL node? That way, those who are watching get a quick refresher. I'll, I'll we'll timestamp it that way. If someone's watching it, they can see exactly how to do it and maybe yeah. share a link as well. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen here. Here's what we're going to do: is we're going to upgrade to QRL node 3.0, the Cesium build. The upgrade, upgrade process is pretty easy. First off, we're going to stop 
stop the running node, the uh, process is called start underscore QRL. You need to do that with control C, control X, or just close the window. After that, we're going to open up a new console session. And we're going to type pip3 install qrl dash u. You can see we're updating and at the very bottom there it says successfully installed qrl 3.0.1. So then we're just going to go start underscore qrl and it's going to be running through some blocks so just let it take its time and do its thing and that's it. Thanks, Michael, for going through the uh, node instructions and how to upgrade that. Where I want to dive into now for the main part of our episode is you've built this really awesome uh, themed case. Uh, so I want to ask uh, with this, could you, uh, I'll show maybe a couple images while you're just uh, describing it, and then you can go through the whole start to finish build for everyone viewing. But uh, can you give us a little bit of context on the idea that you had in your head and how you kind of went about building it? Uh, I, I'd love to hear on this, and I think a lot of people within our community will as well. I guess for those that know me, I like uh, combining the steampunk style with state-of-the-art tech. For me, that's really interesting because you have two different, you know, uh, uh, two different, you have, a, you know, something doing something state-of-the-art novel running on what looks like something that's steam-powered. So in celebration of CCM 3.0, and the, the QRL update, I built a, the, a, a custom uh, case. Um, special thanks to James P for providing the, the hardware to me and uh, doing the build for me. It saved me some time um, from our Discord community. And um, I built out a case. It's got a, it's got a bunch of cool features and uh, we'll play that video so that you get to see what it is. I hope you guys, I hope you guys like it. Thanks, Strike. We're going to pan over to uh, this the walkthrough start to finish of that. And uh, for those of you watching, uh, enjoy the walkthrough of uh, Michael Strike's uh, custom themed node.
final build looks like. So this right here is, uh, has actually been converted into a power switch. This is, there's a little fan under here that I talked about in the video. This is where the hot air comes out. So it's got a little fan in there and it pulls in there from uh, here. So ingress, egress. This is a functional voltmeter. This is the LCD screen. And here's the hardwired port for the, uh, for the RJ45. So we're gonna turn this on and see what happens. Voltage is on. Getting power. So this is a quantum resistant ledger node that's been built into a uh, steampunk case. We're loading up Ubuntu. Uh, special thanks to uh, James P as well for providing the uh, hardware and the build from Discord. Okay, you can see the OS loading here. And start QRL. And there we go. Node is processing. It's retrieving uh, the blocks and it's getting caught up. Well, there you have it, folks. A custom QRL node created by uh, the Michael Strike. Uh, Michael, first off, that was a really awesome to see the start to finish. Uh, I know internally, a lot of a couple members on our team, we we kind of saw some of the um, progress as you've been building that uh, that node. Um, so we kind of saw the behind the scenes of it, but it, it's cool to see it come to fruition. So first off, thanks for sharing that. And for those of you watching, we hope that you uh, enjoyed this. Um, uh, walkthrough build uh, along with the QRL node instructions. And uh, Michael, uh, appreciate it as always. Good conversation. And yeah. we will see everyone uh, watching this video in uh, the next episode. And if you don't already subscribe, make sure that you hit that little subscribe bell. That way you're up to date on the latest QRL videos whenever we come out with them. And we will see you all in the next video for Michael and myself. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you guys. Thanks.